Materials Research Center here at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. My name is Adam. I'm a member of Daniel Gall's research group, and I will be demonstrating my materials machine that I've been working on. This is basically a tool to introduce uh, the basic idea of thin film deposition, as well as a few basic material science concepts to elementary age students. So materials are used to make everything that we all use every day. Metal, glass, and plastics are a few examples of different material types. Now all materials are made of small units called atoms, and atoms are basically like nature's building blocks. They're the thing out of which everything else is built. Materials engineers are people who study materials, and they invent new or improved materials that are somehow better than materials that are available now. One way to do this is to come up with different ways to stack atoms, which results in different materials. Now, atoms are very tiny and are too small to pick up and put into place, so a common way of putting atoms into place is something called thin film deposition. Deposition has applications for lots of things, including uh, optics, electronics, batteries, fuel cells, solar panels, and lots of other applications. Now what happens with deposition is scientists and engineers use equipment that makes atoms fall down on the surface onto which the material is to be built, similar to how snow falls on the ground. This materials machine will hopefully give you a little idea about how deposition works. So we have these cups here, which are going to be used to represent atoms. Now atoms in real life are not anywhere near this big. They're so small that you can't even see them. But um, the point here is that different, there are different kinds of atoms, which we have represented here as different kinds of cups, and they behave differently. Um, for example, these green cups, they have magnets glued inside of them, which represent uh, some kind of directional bonding like you might see in ceramic materials, for example. So as you can see, they attach to each other rather strongly, and they only align in certain ways, like I can't stick this atom down here or it'll snap up in this position. And whereas these blue cups here, they just, um, they have no magnets, they just stack however they fall, and this is more representative of non-directional bonding like you would find in metals and things like that. So let's build some materials and see what happens. So on the left side of this materials machine here, I'm going to place these green cups. Now this is kind of how, this is where the introduction to thin film deposition comes into play. Basically the atoms are going to fall from the top and they're going to land on this surface down here, which is what we're going to build our material on top of. So that's pretty much a basic idea how thin film deposition works. So let's give this a try and see what happens when we actually try to build a material. Here's a close-up of the blue cups. Here's a close-up of the material made of the green cups. If you look at the spaces here in between the cups, you should be able to see that the green cups appear to be much bigger 
than the spaces in between these blue cups. Another difference is there appears to be a difference in the repeated shape that you see over and over in, uh, in the arrangement of the cups. For example, here in the blue cups, we seem to have this kind of rhombus shape that repeats over and over if you draw imaginary lines to the center of each of these cups. That's the kind of shape that you get there. <coughs> With the green cups, however, we have just this simple green, uh, we have just a simple square that gets repeated over and over again if you draw imaginary lines from the center of each of the cups, something like that. Another difference between the two materials that resulted from stacking these different kinds of atoms is the number of atoms that each, of the, each one of them is touching. For example, here you can see this atom in the center is touching one, two, three, four other ones. Similarly, this one in the center is also touching one, two, three, four other atoms. Now in the blue material, you see that this center atom here is actually touching one, two, three, four, five, six other atoms. Similarly, this one here is also touching one, two, three, four, five, six other atoms. So the number of atoms that each one in the center here is touching is also different between the two materials. This result is caused by the fact that these green atoms here have exhibit directional bonding. Like I showed you earlier with the magnets, they only, they only attach to their other neighbors in certain ways. This is similar to directional bonding that you might find in ceramic materials like diamond or silicon, and these kinds of materials are used to make things like computer chips. So the different kinds of atoms, the the repeated pattern that you can see in the way the atoms arrange themselves, differences in the number of atoms that each inner atom touches, all of these things have an effect on the structure of the material and therefore on its properties and how it behaves. So this gives you a basic idea of how thin film 